In this video, I'll be showing you the creation process of how I created this sci-fi humanoid robot in Blender. And if you'd like to purchase the finished artwork project files, you can purchase the project files on my Gumroad store, and you can also get access to them on my Patreon page. So to start off, I gathered some reference images online of some different sci-fi humanoid robots that I wanted to create to kind of get an idea. So I basically created a reference board using PureF. So PureF is a really cool program where you can just drag and drop images from the internet into the program, and then you can scale the images and crop the images and make just a really nice reference board for your project. So then I put that on a separate monitor as I was creating the robot. So the first thing that I started with was sculpting the face. And so I just used my little Wacom pad tablet to sculpt this. Now, if you're a beginner to sculpting and you want to learn the basics of sculpting, I did recently put out a sculpting for beginners tutorial and I show you all the basics of sculpting in that video. And then I show you how to sculpt this cute stylized fish. And I didn't want to make it super detailed because I wanted it to look like a humanoid robot. So I wanted it to look similar to human, but not super detailed. So you can see like I didn't put in the ears and also like I didn't put in the nostrils. Now I do find that sculpting realistic heads and realistic anatomy is quite difficult. So if you are trying to get better at sculpting realistic heads, then I can highly recommend checking out this video from CG Boost. It's free on their YouTube channel and it's called Sculpt a Realistic Head in Blender. And the tutorial is created by Jim Morin, who is a character artist. And I've followed this tutorial before and I found it really helpful for getting better at sculpting heads. And I definitely want to follow the tutorial a few more times just to kind of get better at sculpting realistic heads. So then after I completely sculpted the head, I wanted to add some cool sci-fi plans plates and things to make it look more like a robot. Now I considered retopologizing the head and then like UV unwrapping the head and then texture painting like a bump map, which I could use to add bump details to the model. I have a video on that as well if you want to check it out. But since I was already sculpting the head, I just decided to go in and sculpt some details. So if you are wanting to sculpt like some sci-fi details on a sculpted model, then what you can do is go into sculpt mode of the model and you can click here to choose the crease brush. Then you can press the F key to make your brush really small. And then you can also turn the strength of the crease brush up a bit. Then what you can do to sculpt these sharp lines is you can click on the stroke settings and you can turn the stroke method to line. I need to add geometry as I sculpt. So I'll turn on the Dyn Topo, click on OK. And then I turned the detail pretty high to like a four. So if you turn the detail smaller, it's going to be higher quality. And I think I'll turn my brush all the way up to one. And I can just like go down here, sculpt some more details, go over here. And you can see I can sculpt bits of plating and stuff because it looks really straight. And then also for sculpting kind of those little dots there, which might look like little holes for bolts or screws, you can just like click and draw a very short line. You can do it a few more times even, or maybe make your brush bigger. And so that's basically how I did all the different details. So then after that, I also wanted to add like some circles here where the ears would be. So this was super easy, just added a circle or a cylinder and just kind of extruded these pieces and inset them just to make some cool details. And then of course, just added a mirror modifier. So it's on the other side. And then I also added the eye models. So I just added some spheres and just stuck them here on the eyes with a mirror modifier. And then after I added the eyes, I had to go back into sculpt mode and I kind of had to adjust the eyelids to kind of fit them around the eyes. And then you can see I wanted the eyes to kind of pop out a little bit. So basically I just selected the faces here and extruded them out so that kind of the pupil area is just popping out a little bit more. And that gives the eyes a little bit more depth. Now for the base body, I decided to sculpt this as well. But then after I sculpted it, I wanted kind of the flat spots here on the sides to be like very flat. So what I did for this is I went to the side view and I hit the C for the circle select. You can scroll your mouse wheel to change the size of the circle select. And I just went around here and clicked just to select that entire side. Then what you can do is hit the O key to turn on the proportional editing and you can scale this and then you can scale it on the X axis. And you can see I was just able to kind of scale this down and really flatten it. So that's kind of how I flatten that part down. So then for the rest of the body, I didn't sculpt it. I just modeled it using like the default modeling tools. So you can see the shoulder plate. I basically just started with a plane and I kind of extruded the plane down to kind of add these faces here and then extruded the plane out here. So then once I kind of had that loop in that loop, I was just able to fill those faces and I added a subdivision surface modifier to kind of smooth it out. And then this part here in the center, I just kind of inset that and extruded that back in. And I'm just going to just hide the subsurf modifier for now and kind of shade this flat. So you can see this is what it looks like. So it's pretty simple box modeling. But then right here to kind of add that little inset there, I just added some loop cuts here. And then I inset those loops back there. And that way there's a big crease going back in there into the object. So then when you add the subsurf modifier, you can see it adds that little bit there, but it looks a lot more smooth. You could also like add a loop cut here if you wanted to kind of sharpen that up, add some loop cuts there if you wanted to kind of sharpen up that edge. So I modeled this joint here, kind of going from the side of the robot back down. And then 
you can see this part here, I just extruded it and scaled it up to kind of fit this centerpiece. Now for this piece here, this was pretty easy. It was a cylinder. You can see this bottom piece kind of comes up and comes back down. And that way you can see more of the mechanical details inside the robot. So to get this effect, if you add a cylinder, let me just like select the bottom of the cylinder and I'll delete the faces. So then what you can do is go into wireframe and you can just like box select the center point here. And then if the proportional editing is turned on, you can hit G to grab and bring it up on the Z axis. And you can see that's basically how I made it. So I just kind of brought it up like that. And then of course I box selected this part, brought it down, kind of scaled it down just like that. And then also you can see that there's like a little crease right in there to kind of make it look like there are two plates which are stuck together. So to do that, what you can do is go to the edge select and you can just select the center edge. You can hit control B to add a bevel, just kind of bevel that out just by a small amount, then just hit X to delete and just delete the faces. And then you can see I also gave it a solidify modifier so it actually has some thickness. And then I also gave it just a bevel modifier so that it's a little bit round there on the edges. Now as for this piece here, this was quite easy, the joint piece. So this was really just a cylinder. You can add a mirror modifier to the cylinder so it mirrors over on each side. And then you can just extrude it out and inset it and make some cool details. And then for this waist piece here where he might like rotate his waist, I just duplicated this object and kind of extruded it out. So it is very similar, but it's a bit longer. So once the modeling was done, it was time to do some of the materials. So I first wanted to start by doing a bit of painting to the head because I wanted a few different colors on the plates. So because this was a sculpt, I didn't really want to have to retopologize the entire character. It wasn't a character that I wanted to make for like animation or anything. So I just wanted to quickly be able to texture paint some colors. So that is where the painting in the sculpt mode can be really useful. So if I go here into sculpt mode, if you go right down here in the sculpt mode, there's actually actually a paint feature. And then to actually see this color, let me just click right here on this drop down arrow here and I'll choose the color type here to attribute. And now you can actually see the color that I painted. And I have a full tutorial if you wanna learn how to use the painting in the sculpt mode, link to that is in the description. So you can see where the faces, I painted this a bit lighter, but then all of these plates here were kind of a bit darker, added some darker plates on the back, and then the entire thing was just kind of a gray color on the rest of the head. Now to actually see your painting on the model, what you need to do in the shade editor is search for color attribute. So add the attribute color and then you can put the color here into the base color and then you can actually see it showing up on your model. So here's the procedural node setup for the head. So you can see I added the color attribute. That's just the colors that I painted. I added an RGB curves because I wanted it to be a bit darker and I put that into the base color and then I also turned up the metallic value to make it look like metal. And then for the roughness here, if you look closely at the reflections, you can kind of see there's like some little plates or some little sections where it's more rough or more shiny. So for this, what I did is I added a Voronoi texture and I used the Voronoi color. And then I also added a noise texture and just kind of made it kind of detailed and I mixed it together with a mix color. Then I put that through a color ramp and a hue saturation value just to change the colors. And finally I put that into the roughness. So the color ramp can be used to change like both of the colors. So you can choose the lightest color and the darkest color to choose how rough and shiny you want it to be. But then you can use the hue saturation value here. You can use the value to make it more shiny or less shiny and that controls the entire thing. I also considered not using a metallic head so you can can see if I turn the metallic down, now it just looks a bit more like a plasticky head, but I didn't really like that. I liked the shiny look, so I left the metallic on. Now I use this same material setup for the plates over here. So here's the shoulder plates, and you can see again, I use the noise texture and the Voronoi, and I mix them together, put that through a hue saturation value and a color ramp, and that made a really cool, interesting metal material. Now for the main body, I wanted this to look like a shiny white plasticky material. So for this, I just added a very basic plasticky material. So I did want to add a little bit of variation to the roughness, so I just added a noise texture, added some detail, put that through a color ramp, and then a hue saturation value, and finally put that into the principled shader. So you can see it is a bit hard to see, but there is a tiny little bit of variation in the roughness in some spots. Now as for these details here on the chest of the robot, I use the decal master add-on, and I actually recently created a review video on how to use the add-on, so if you'd like to check out that review video, link is in the description, and I also have an affiliate link to the add-on so if you purchase it through my link then I'll earn a small commission but this decal master add-on was super useful for quickly adding decals to the robot. 
So once you install the decal master add-on, you can hit the N key for the side panel. You can go to the decal master tab here, and then you can click on start projecting. And because I wanted to project a normal map, I hit the normal button right here, and then I chose start projecting. So now you can see I can move this around and there's this decal here. This is like a base decal that it adds on default. You can hit S to scale the decal, R to rotate, or you can just move around. And then you can hit the space bar to add the decal. Now to import more decals, you can hit the F key. And what's really cool about this add-on is it comes with a bunch of decals that you can use in your projects. So you can go into the normal stamps and then I use this one here, kind of this cool triangle one. So I'll just add this one in here and then I can just move it around and kind of place that there. And I also use this one right here. So I'll choose this one and you can hit S to scale it down, make it really small. And if I make it really small, it kind of looks like some little bolts here. So I kind of stuck those there, just kind of stuck them around. And that's how I added those decals there on the model. So then when you're done, just hit the escape key and that's going to go out of the decal mode. And so you can actually manage all the decals here. So if I just click on these little like arrows here, you can see it's going to jump me to that decal. So like here's this one, the check mark one. But if I just want to not see it, I can click on the eye here to get rid of it, or I can delete it by just hitting the trash icon. Now, what's also really cool about the add-on is I can change a lot of the settings. You can see on this triangle one, it's kind of gray. So to do this up, there's the transform settings. I can like move the decal around. There's also some effects if I want to add effects. But what I want to do is open up the shading and then I can choose custom base color. Then I can just make this kind of like a dark gray color and I can see that arrow is a nice dark gray. I could also use custom metallic and I could turn the metallic up if I want it to be like a metallic decal, so like that. I could also use change the normal strength, so if I wanted to make that normal really strong or less strong. And there's also a custom roughness so I can turn that roughness up and down just to adjust the decal. So then for the lighting, I added in this acoustical shell 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. And then also here up on the render properties, I turned on the transparent button so you can't see the HDRI in the background. So then I added a bunch of different area lights. I added some different rim lights and some other lights to add some cool lighting to the robot. So for example, you can see here's a big rim light. I added this in the background and I gave it a slight blue color. So you can see adding that rim light really just pops the character out from the background and you can kind of see the shape of the robot better. And I like the slight blue color. It kind of gives it a cool sci-fi look. And I added some other rim lights, so like this one up here, just to give a bit of a rim light to the top of the head and some more rim lights to the side of the character. Now I also added this circular area light right here. And why I made it a circular area light is because I wanted to add this little circular highlight there in the eyes. So you can see here it is without. You can see without it, the character looks a lot more dead. He doesn't look really alive. He doesn't have as much character, but you can see with that, kind of adding that little highlight there just really adds a lot more character to the eyes and makes him feel more alive. So I really like adding that highlight to characters eyes. Now even though this is a sculpt you can see the character is kind of looking off to the side. So I did just want to do some very basic rigging to give the character more life, kind of give him a bit of a pose because that gives him a lot more life instead of just having him be all static. But I didn't want to go through and retopologize the entire character and do all the rigging so I just did a really basic rigging setup for the sculpt. So what I did is went to the add menu and I went here to armature, just added a single bone. And then you can go into edit mode of the bone and you can move the bone up and make it the correct size to fit the head and the neck. Then what you can do with the bone selected is use the object context menu and you can subdivide it two times and then you can kind of rotate it and just shape it to the head. Then what you can do is you can select the head and I also select the eyes at the same time and you can hold down the shift key and you can select the armature last. Then you can press control P and you can use the with automatic weight. So once you've done that, you can see I can go into pose mode of the armature and I can rotate these bones and it's going to rotate the skull. Sometimes it doesn't work that well, but in this case it actually worked pretty well. And I really just use this bone right here. This is kind of the bone in the center between the neck and the head. And so I just double tap the R key to kind of rotate that sideways. So I just rotated the head a bit. Now I did also want to pose the eyes slightly to make the robot look like he was kind of just looking up here to the side instead of just looking straight on. So what I did is applied the mirror modifier so that both sides were geometry. But then you can see here, if I go into edit mode, you can see I already rotated the head so that geometry kind of is over here because this is where the geometry originally was. So in edit mode, if you go here to the modifiers, you can click on this button here, which is the on cage button on the modifier here for the armature. And that way it's going to put the geometry where it's been rigged to in edit mode. Now to kind of rotate the eyes at once, you can click on the transform pivot point and you can change it from median point 
to individual origins. Now, if it's set to median point and you try to rotate this, you can see the eyes are rotating together. But if you choose it to individual origins, now if I double tap the R key, you can see they're gonna rotate individually. So I can kind of rotate this around to kind of make the eyes look up. Now I also needed to rig the ear pieces to the head. So what I did to rig the ears to the head is I just selected the head here and just hid this to get it out of the way. And then if I go back into pose mode of the armature, I can select everything and hit Alt R and Alt G and Alt S just to bring the armature back to its default position. So then I went back to object mode and I selected the cylinder pieces here for the ears. And then I held down the shift key and selected the bones last. Now because the bones are selected last, if I go here to object mode, I can go into pose mode and you can see in pose mode, I can move the bones around, but you can see these objects are still selected. They're just not the active object. So if I select this here in the center, the center bone, I can press control P and I can set parent to bone. And this way, this object here is going to move exactly with the bone. So it's going to be parented to this exact bone. That way, if I go back to object mode and unhide the objects here, and then we'll just select the bones again and go into pose mode, I can now like select this bone here and I can rotate this and you can see the ears are now gonna rotate with the head. Now I also wanted to give the arms a basic pose but I didn't wanna go through and rig the entire arms because I wasn't really interested in doing animation. I just wanted a basic pose. So to rig the arms, I first had to separate them into their own objects. So I'll just show you as an example with these two objects here. So you first just need to apply the mirror modifier. So apply that modifier so that they're both geometry on either side. And then you can go into edit mode on both objects. You can go into wireframe and you can just just box select one side. You can then hit the P key and you can separate by selection. This way it's going to separate from the other side so you can see this is its own object and this is its own object as well as that. So I just did that for all of the arm objects. So all the objects on this side were a separate object. Now I wanted to rotate the arm, but I needed to make it look realistic. So the arm was rotating by the joint piece. So what you can do is you can select one of these pieces here. Like I'll just select this object, go into edit mode, and you can just select the point here, which is in the very center. So this cylinder here is in the very center of the joint. I'll now press shift S and I'm going to move my mouse to cursor to select it and click there. And that way the cursor is in the very center of the joint. Now what I can do is I can select all the arm objects on this side and I can click right here on the transform pivot point and I can change this to 3D cursor. So if I hit R to rotate and then hit X, you can see now it looks like the arm is rigged because it's rotating correctly where the joint is. And then I did the same thing down here. So I selected this object, went into edit mode and I selected this point here and I press shift S, cursor to selected. You can go back to object mode and just select these bottom pieces and then you can rotate them on the X axis and you can see it appears as though the robot is rigged because it's rotating correctly with the joint. So then I wanted to add a cool background to make the robot look like he's in some sort of sci-fi spaceship or sci-fi corridor. So what I did is downloaded this image here from Pixabay and I threw the image into Krita and gave it a bit of a blur and then saved out that image. Then back in Blender, I went to the add menu and I added image and I added the mesh plane and just added in the image from Pixabay. So you can see here is the image. You can see it's nice and blurred and I put it way far away in the background. And then also just to give it even more of a blur, I added the depth of field here on the camera and just chose the focus where the robot's head is. And then I did adjust a few of the materials for the backdrop. So if I go to the shading here, you can see here's the original image, but I blurred it in Krita. Then I added an RGB curves to make it more blue. So it has more of a sci-fi feel. And then I put it through a hue saturation value and turn the value down and the saturation down to make it a bit darker. And then finally put that into the emission there, the principal shader. So that way it kind of gives the feel that the robot is in some sort sort of sci-fi environment, but it's not too distracting because it's just blurred and kind of dark in the background. So now for the compositing, I just went over here to the compositing and to see the compositing in the viewport, I went to the rendered view and then here on the dropdown, I used the viewport compositor. I turned it to always so that you can see the compositing in the viewport. Now I wanted to add a vignette around the image. So there's a little bit of a darkening around the corners of the image. So to do this, I added a box mask and I scaled up the width and height of the box mask. So basically it's white in the center, but then there's just a little black outline. And then I blurred that so you can see now there's kind of that blurred black image there and I put that through an alpha over and put it into the factor. 
render. So then I put the render layers, which is the final image into the bottom one. And then this top image here, that can be the color of the vignette. Then I also added this glare node to add just a very subtle glare to kind of some of the bright reflections. So here are the final images. And again, if you'd like to check out the final renders, you can find them on my ArtStation profile. I'll have a link to the artwork in the description. And you can also help support the channel by purchasing the finished artwork project files on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. Links to that are in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. And I hope you learned some new things that maybe you can implement into your own project creation. So that'll finish it up for this video. So thank you for watching.